Hi guys, as you know, I'm Jared Ward, and I just am going to start making some videos about health. Um, I think it's really important, especially given the current coronavirus, the political climate, all the tension between different people. I think it's super important we start talking about what you can do to support your family and yourself. Um, I'm also founding a business called The Crown Institute, and it's definitely going to be like a wellness center where people can get nutrition, chiropractic, and even emotional help um, for whatever they're going through, whatever their presenting issue is. But it's also an institute because I really value educating communities and families and individuals all about how they can better take care of themselves. Because I really believe that healthy societies, cities, countries come from healthy families. And healthy families require not only healthy physical bodies, but healthy souls and minds. And so that's really the purpose of my business that I'm starting. And I'm hoping to provide a lot more like free resources and videos so that you guys can become independent and strong and, ne and don't necessarily have to follow like the mainstream thought on a lot of different things. So swimming against the current is good. So um, thanks for watching. So the first topic I wanna talk about is the gut. So this is probably my favorite topic to talk about in pretty much almost everything I've studied, just because so many things start and end in the gut. Um, you may have heard that 70 to 80% of your immune system is in the gut. This is true. It's because we have lots of different beneficial bacteria and organisms that live in there that help us produce vitamins, they help, they help us fight off invaders, things like that. So when I think about coronavirus or just like any sickness in general, just the seasonal flu, some people get it and some people don't. And what's the difference? The difference, I believe, is the strength of your immune system. So I think it's easy and rational to say that if you're struggling with your immune system and if you're getting sick easily, you might wanna take a look at your gut. So let's talk about it. So a couple other signs of gut dysfunction. Obviously, digestive issues is super obvious. If I have diarrhea, constipation, bloating, okay, something's going on, right? But let's think a little bit bigger than that. Um, one of my favorite examples of gut dysfunction is actually eczema. So the skin and the gut, they kind of mirror each other. Like if I put lotion on my skin, my skin will absorb the lotion, right? Um, if I eat food, my gut will absorb the food. They're, they're not exactly the same tissues, but they're similar. And so I just like to use that analogy that if you're having something happen on your skin, like eczema, acne, dry skin, overproduction of oil, anything like that, um, we want to look at the gut as well. It's good to investigate gut. Putting on tons of creams and stuff, like that's good for symptomatic relief, maybe it'll help, but it's good to look at another perspective as well. Um, another sign of gut dysfunction is actually autoimmune disease. One of the most common is Hashimoto's, which is a thyroid autoimmune disease. A lot of times that comes from gut dysfunction. And if you have, cause really like if you've heard of leaky gut, that can lead to a lot of immune conditions, right? And so once you have one autoimmune disease, usually you're kind of headed towards another one because your immune system is malfunctioning, so it's not just gonna affect only one tissue or one organ. Um, another one that people don't really think about is actually musculoskeletal pain. I hope you can still see the board. But musculoskeletal pain, so like knee pain, back pain, headaches even, all those types of things can be very related to the gut. Um, because it's all about inflammation. The more inflammation you have in the body, in your body, the more easily you're going to experience pain. So for example, I had a patient, he had knee pain that wouldn't go away for a long time, right? And um, he was getting adjusted, he was getting muscle work done on it, he was getting massage on it, things weren't really working. I put him on a diet plan and a nutritional supplement plan and his knee pain went away because his body was just so inflamed that even a past injury was still acting up, right? So some of your musculoskeletal pain could actually be coming from the way you're eating and your gut health. Um, next, I wanna talk about mental health. Actually, a lot of people don't think about mental health being related to the gut. So there's something called the gut-brain axis, and it's basically like a highway of communication between the gut and the brain. Um, also, 80% of serotonin is made in your gut. So serotonin is like the joy or the happiness hormone. And if you're not making that properly in your gut, that can lead to a deficiency of serotonin. 
and can cause feelings like depression or even just like a melancholiness, kind of unmotivated, things like that. And if that goes on long enough, you could eventually develop clinical depression or even worse mental health um, issues. So when you're struggling with negative feelings or feeling unmotivated or low energy or depression, it's really important to look at the gut because the, that could be, fixing the gut could be the root solution for your mental health. Um, and then finally, another sign of gut dysfunction is actually joint conditions. So I actually was in my class this week. Um, me and all my classmates were, are taking a class with Dr. Dan Murphy, he's really great. And he actually showed us a study how people who couldn't regulate their blood sugar, so their digestion wasn't working the way it's supposed to, um, actually developed disc disease in their spine, right? So what happens is, is if your blood sugar is really high or whatever, um, these sugars basically attach to proteins and kind of make them unwind. And proteins are what we're made of. It makes us strong, it makes our joints strong. And when those unwind, you basically get arthritis or degeneration of the joints. So if someone comes to me and they have a disc issue or they have low back pain, I'm going to be wondering, how's their blood sugar handling? How are they handling their health um, and their gut health? And that could be the root cause of why they're not getting better. So you need someone who really knows how to look from multiple angles at your symptom. Your symptom is just the final presentation of the root issues that have been going on. So how did our gut health get so bad? Well, as a culture, we have poor nutrition. We have really poor nutrition. Our food is a, is much, much less nutrient dense than it was 50 years ago. That's just a fact. And there's no, no really way around it. And that's why so many people experience great results once they finally get on good quality supplements because they're actually eating nutrient dense foods or they're supplementing their diet with nutrient food based supplements. Um, food based supplements are different from the kinds that you get at like Costco or somewhere like that. Um, Costco is a start, but it's not going to be the food based really good supplements that I would recommend you to take to really get the bang for your buck. Um, so we have poor nutrition, we're just unfortunate, and so because of that our bodies just don't have the building blocks to stay healthy. Um, some examples is gluten and lectins. Both of those, what they do, like say this is our gut lining, they just go in and they dissolve and cause the cells of the gut lining to widen apart. And when they widen apart, that's called leaky gut, and that causes inflammation, and it's just a kind of a downward spiral from there. So we're always eating gluten and lectins. Lectins are basically in grains. And that's just like a plant defense mechanism, right? You've all seen like, I don't know if a deer or a squirrel like eats a piece of fruit, right? And then they poop, they're gonna poop out the seed. And that's because the plant has a defense mechanism in the seed to prevent the body from digesting it. Well, what humans do, we take those seeds and we grind it up into a flour and we bake bread or something like that. And if we're not strong enough, we're actually eating just a little bit of toxin with every type of carbohydrate or most types of carbohydrates, most grains, and those are called lectins. And so um, it's really important to evaluate how much gluten and how much lectins you're actually eating. Um, another thing that we do on top of that is not only do we eat the poisonous like toxic grain, but we also spray it with glyphosate. And glyphosate is called Roundup, or like things like, that's basically what it's called. And it's a pesticide, I believe, I'm not exactly the sure the exact um, nature of it. But what it does is it also spreads those cells apart in our gut even further. So glyphosate is just really toxic to the body. And so we have the natural seed causing the cells to spread apart. And then we have the glyphosate causing it to spread apart even more. And basically your gut looks like cheesecloth. Everything goes into the blood right away, which is not how it's supposed to be, which can cause inflammation, allergies, autoimmune disease. It causes your immune system to freak out because it's like, what's all this stuff doing in here? This this floating piece of broccoli isn't supposed to look like that. It's supposed to be broken down more, right? Um, or this floating piece of rice or whatever you're eating. So that's just an important thing to consider. And that's why eating organic is actually really important because when you don't eat organic, you're eating the lectins, which is a natural toxin, and then you're eating the glyphosate, which is a man-made toxin that are both doing the same thing, which are hurting your gut health. Um, and then finally, st uh, stress. Obviously, if you have high amounts of stress, your body just isn't gonna heal. Your body has two phases of being, fight or flight, or stress, and then healing. You can't be in both at the same time. Your body has to swing back and forth between the two as appropriate.
and we want your body to stay in the healing phase as much as possible. And what helps with that is actually chiropractic. Chiropractic helps your body get unstuck from the stress phase and begin to modulate appropriately again. Um, and then finally, what could be causing more gut um, issues? How So that is pathogens. So a lot of times I think about parasites. A lot of people have parasites and they don't even know it. So um, yeah, that's just, it's just a fact. And a lot of times it's not very um, well detected by modern medical science, which is fine. We just need to figure out ways to do it. Um, it's known that the more often you deworm a horse, the longer it lives. And I believe the same could be said of humans. So you can get them in sushi, you can get it from breathing the air, you can get it from walking on the beach, from eating undercooked foods, um, it's from being around animals, you can get parasites, it's just really easy to get. So it's always good to be mindful that you're doing things that are proactive against parasites. And then microbes like viruses and bacteria, you can have bacterial imbalances in your body. Um, even taking a probiotic all the time can actually contribute to a bacterial imbalance because you're taking the same kind over and over and over and over again. And that kind of leads me to my next point. That's why you really need a personalized nutrition and herbal therapy plan because this probiotic may be good for one person, but it may not be good for another person. And so it's just really hard to tell. Um, so how do we fix all this gut stuff? So I always recommend an anti-inflammatory diet. Whatever decreases inflammation in your body is gonna help you have less headaches, it's gonna help you have less pain, it's gonna help you have less bloating around the midsection, and it's just going to be better for your general health and longevity. Um, also, a personalized nutrition and herbal therapy program is super important. Um, whether you're seeing a doctor who does blood labs and like does a really good job at looking at labs and then giving you supplements, not prescription drugs, to help with conditions, um, I think that's really beneficial because supplements and nutrition usually fix the deficiency or fix the root cause. And prescriptions are just kind of, um, they're kind of like a, a help to get you to heal. Um, they're just a crutch along the way. And they're important and they play a time and place, but let's get to the root solution and find the root solution. Um, I do see, I do help people and do these personalized things. If you're in the Bay Area, I can definitely help you with that. Um, but yeah, so definitely see a doctor that either does labs and looks really closely at what's going on in your blood, or you can see a doctor who does muscle testing and he uses basically just the way that like, if you hit your head, they're gonna shine a light in your eye to see how the iris reacts to the light. That's a muscle, right? Telling you if the brain is healthy or not. Someone who does muscle testing is gonna use a muscle in the arm or a leg or something and give it stimulus to see the health of your brain and therefore read the health of your body. So yeah, if you have any questions or you need help, just let me know. And I hope you liked my first video and hopefully they'll keep getting better from here. So thanks for watching guys.